let's do a quick activity. Go to Facebook, go to your profile, select Manage Posts and apply the filter 2009. Find anything cringy? Because I did. Wants to be Mrs. Taylor Lautner? Embarrassing. In my defence, I was 13 back in 2009 and Taylor Lautner was one of the leading men in hangs of that year, according to this website. But back to your Facebook posts. If like me, you did find something cringy, tell me, why did you cringe? <laughs> Was there something you said that might probably get you cancelled today if someone found it and you know it's problematic and no longer represents you? Guess what? That same website also reminded me that in Feb 2009, Miley Cyrus was caught mocking Asians. She's probably cringing right now, I hope. Otherwise, boo, she's cancelled. Except in 2009, she didn't get cancelled. Hannah Montana the movie came out later that year and made USD 170 million in the box office. And though we'll never forget racist Miley, we probably remember her for a lot of other things unrelated to this incident. You can probably guess where I'm going with this. I came in like a That's right, today I want to talk about cancel culture. You're probably thinking, not another video on cancel culture. We already know, cancel culture sucks. But I'm not here to defend influencers or celebrities, neither am I here to be the voice for angry mobs. Instead, I want to try to figure out what cancel culture means for the everyday people like you and I, and whether we can get cancelled for our opinions. It started out around 2017 as a Twitter fad. The term you're cancelled was gaining popularity as a slang to express that you disagree with someone's opinion or that their opinion sucked. As a Twitter native, I remember it playing out as a joke until all of a sudden, it wasn't funny anymore. You're cancelled no longer simply meant your opinion sucks. It meant you're dismissed. Today, cancel culture has found its way to our part of the world as well. Xia Xue and Narelle King had a pretty public fight over it. Recently, Silver Chan from media company Night Owl Cinematics faced the brunt of it after ex-employees reviewed abusive employee management methods. Cancel culture as a concept today seems inescapable. So what I'm curious about is, should we be worried about cancel culture? My name is Nicole, this is Agree to Disagree, where we try not to cancel differing opinions. Before we carry on, is there a specific definition of cancel culture that we're working with for the rest of the video? Cancel culture is a way of expressing disapproval of one's actions by exerting social pressure to effectively end one's career or tarnish their reputation either through boycotts or disciplinary actions from their employers. One argument, two sides. It's Nicole versus Nicole. We did a poll with some of you and most feel that cancel culture makes sense in theory. One of you phrased it really well. Cancel culture helps guide society on behaviour that's generally deemed acceptable. People will be less inclined to do something if they know they will be cancelled for it. What's deemed to be funny and acceptable has evolved over time. Jokes from classics like Friends, The Office and even the news maybe was fine back then. What's, uh, what's my boy doing with the Barbie? <laughs> Not so funny anymore, right? I think we can all agree that cancel culture is good because it's led to calling out sexual misconduct of this guy. Although, it's also a pretty rare occurrence. On the day-to-day, -day, not only does it keep public figures in check, it also really forces the everyday individual to truly examine themselves. It's human nature to live on with beliefs that were passed down, but the fear or awareness of being cancelled can motivate us to look internally and reflect on the biases that we grew up with and outdated beliefs that need to be challenged. Hold up. The reason I haven't been cancelled is because nobody gives a shit about me! So I get that cancel culture makes sense in theory, but what about in real life? Holding yourself accountable is a good thing, but how do we draw the line between accountability and self-censorship? As this Gen Y tries to articulate, navigating accountability can feel like moving through a minefield blindfolded. She chooses to use trans rights as an issue to demonstrate this. As a cishet woman who agrees with J.K. Rowling's view that trans and cis women are distinct from one another, she admits to the possibility that trans women themselves might think differently, but is afraid to ask in fear of being labelled asshole. My initial reaction when I read this article was really, just don't be an asshole about things, Dana. But as the existence of popular Reddit thread r slash mi proves, 
Our perception of people actually really varies from person to person. So she briefly takes one for the team by admitting that she's pretending to understand and embrace all their choices. A facade erected to mask how ignorant and uncertain she truly is. A scary confession because it paints a realistic picture of what happens when we're afraid to use the wrong pronouns, be implicitly biased towards a group, overstep in a joke, or worse still, get caught in a hot mic that we totally disengage altogether. Why, why, Nicole, you're very dramatic there. Okay, yes, it is a legit worry that cancel culture instills a culture of fear, encourages polarization and self-censorship, thus pushing people with differing opinions further from one another. But I think that's quite an exaggerated concern, no? Here's what I think. As much as her questions were valid and that she's indeed entitled to her own opinions, using the article to express misconceptions and ignorance is a no-no. Is it really someone else's problem if you don't ask the right questions at the right time in the right way? Are you asking questions for the sake of proving a point or are you genuinely trying to learn from a differing perspective? Have you tried reading up on the topic first? At the end of the day, you can't blame anyone but yourself if you aren't trying to ask questions or educate yourself, right? Here's a classic example of someone who clearly didn't seek to understand and ask questions. A lecturer at Nyan Polytechnic was sacked after a video of him making racist remarks to an interracial couple went viral online, prompting ex-students to come forward with accounts of Islamophobic comments he made in class since 2017. 2017? That's four years of his behaviour going unchecked. Four years to consider if his opinions made him an asshole, which he clearly did not think so. And so cancer culture came for him. If cancer culture didn't exist, would he still be spouting offensive remarks in classrooms? Probably. So what you're saying is, only people who deserve to get cancelled will get cancelled? But is it true though? I think one social media account comes to mind when thinking about who decides who gets cancelled in this country. Wake Up Singapore is the unofficial gatekeeper for the woke community. You'll probably find the latest acts of racism being called out on your platform way before major publications get wind of these incidents. While it's undeniable that they've shed light on certain pervasive issues that long deserve to be spotlighted, what happens when they get something wrong? Remember Sovereign Lady? The one who refused to wear a mask in Singapore back in 2020 when it was mandated to do so for the sake of public health? What a menace! Am I right? Except, you're wrong! This isn't that lady. This woman was wrongly identified as the sovereign lady after children of the internet hunted for her online. Her personal details were revealed and she was left exposed to threats and racist comments. When we get it wrong, it can be difficult to roll back our actions. Sorry I caused you emotional distress in uh, your job. Just isn't gonna cut it. But technically, the attacks on mistaken ladies stopped when the real culprit was found. So in that way, cancer culture made no permanent damage on her reputation. Not exactly. When a private citizen makes the news for being cancelled, the stories about the incident typically shows up first when you search for that person's name. Just because you've served your time or publicly apologised doesn't make the search results go away. In addition to that, celebrities who get cancelled don't suffer permanent effects. So even if they lose some of their followers, they still have a relatively large audience remaining. Bad press gets pushed down quickly and people easily move on to the next thing. They are never truly cancelled. Save for rare few cases, especially when the law has been broken, it is the law that cancels them and not the social police. Plus, all you need to do is to issue a public apology that checks all the boxes and the court of public opinion will back off. Who cares if we don't mean it? We live in the land of 10 years series and moral answers after all. Just so we're clear, we're sorry for any hurt that was unintentionally caused. It's not an apology. Yeah. Truth be told, I'm still scared of getting cancelled. But if you really think about it, when was the last time you heard someone in Singapore being cancelled outside of the examples that we've listed? And you can't say Dikosh! My guess is if you've managed to think of some, the list isn't long. The fact that we're sitting here wrecking our brains to come up with examples might suggest that cancel culture in Singapore is not as bad as we think. Singaporeans are a lot more level-headed than we give ourselves credit for. This means that we don't blindly cancel every little thing. I've said a lot, but I want to leave you with one final thought. Remember that cancel culture arose with empathetic intentions to create safe spaces and to give back power to those typically disenfranchised, discriminated against, or in minority groups. Make no mistake, while giving back power is important, we need to be absolutely sure the next time we push the cancel button is when we really need to gather the troops to take Goliath down. Do you think cancel culture causes more harm than good? Would you personally cancel someone? I'd like to hear your thoughts, so comment down below and stay tuned for the next episode.